TorahCafe.com. A Jew has to know. That is what is called studying of Torah. Is therefore an essential part of, of being Jewish, not just because it is one of the commandments. It's a part of what, what, if you are Jewish, it means that you are studying. You are studying the Torah. Ein Uma Tenu Uma Ela Torah Terra. Our nation is only a nation in virtue of the Torah. We are Am Hasefer, the nation of the book, the book of the books, the Torah. When I'm teaching my children Torah, I'm not telling them this will be this will be useful for your life. Oh, I'm telling them that, that will, it will allow you to pass the examinations in an easier way or anything like this. Not even telling them that it gives them a certificate to the world to come. But it is something else which is, I'm trying to, to in a way, to transmit to them the feeling that that is, that is what we are. In, in, a, in a certain way, it's a story about almost every part of the Torah. We are constantly interacting with the Torah. When it comes to the Torah, we are one people. It explains the deepest mystery of Jewish history. Because what normally makes a nation? Normally, a nation is a group of people who live in the same land or under the same political jurisdiction, or who speak the same language, or who share the same fate. Jews, however, remained a nation even when they were dispersed and scattered across the world. All that time, 2,000 years, they saw themselves and they were seen by others as one people. How come? They didn't share a land. They were scattered over every country and continent, except that one thing the covenant their ancestors had made at Sinai. Though they had lost their land, they still had their laws. Though that they were scattered around all the cultures, they still observed the same holy days, read the same holy books, said the same holy prayers, turned to the same place, Jerusalem, when they prayed. They remained one nation. Torah makes us a nation. And the Torah was given in singular, not in plural. All the Ten Commandments speak to us as one person, one soul, one body, one unique, united people. Over 3,000 years ago, one group of people came together at one mountain on one day to receive one Torah. We are global citizens, professionals in every sect of society, leading lives not by the minute, but by the second. How can we bring the ancient wisdom of the Torah into our modern lives? from Sinai to cyberspace, bringing ancient wisdom to your modern world. Simon Hessel and I'm the director of the Jewish Book Council. So the mission of the Jewish Book Council is one sentence, to promote the reading, writing, publishing, and distribution of books of Jewish interest in the English language. Anything to do with Jewish books, we're there. We are the only organization in North America whose only focus is the book. I think everything we do in the world of Jewish books starts with the Torah. There's no doubt, nobody can argue that. Everything is based on Torah. Uh, and how it's changed over the years. Now I think the Torah has remained relevant 
every single year in every generation because it's timeless. And we've been able to use it today as when it was handed to Moses. It, that's the way it goes. So um, it's been the thread also that has held the Jewish people together. We didn't have a place. We didn't have a piece of land. But we had a book. We're the only people where a book held us together, which is an amazing, amazing history. Um, and why? Well, first of all, we were educated. We were able to read the book. We were able to be involved with the book, to learn from the book. How is this uh, computer age and this digital age going to impact upon the effect of the Torah on the Jewish people? Um, we know that in those circles where um, they cannot use an electronic book on a Shabbat or on a Jewish holiday, I know what's happening now, which is very interesting. People will have the electronic book for during the week, and they'll buy the hard copy of the book for the holidays, which shows that the book is still very important, and it's a matter of how you read it, how you get this information. I don't like to walk into a home that doesn't have a book, doesn't have books. It seems void of something. It doesn't seem like a home. It might be a house. It might be four walls. But without books, it's, it's not a home. And as for learning, we are always learning. We're always going to school. Uh, my husband likes to say I'm a perpetual student. We're, we're all, I, but all of us are like that. We love to learn. And how are we going to learn? It's through the book. Well, for Shavuot, I'd say it's, that is the scholar's holiday nowadays. And when you think of a scholar, you think of a book. So in observance of the holiday, when you have two days and, and you have some extra time, find a book to read a book of Jewish interest that will um, enhance your understanding of the Jewish world and make that your project for Shepherd So, and enjoy the holiday and all the dairy that goes with it. Hi, my name is Michael Broid and I'm the Academic Director of the Law and Religion Program here at Emory and a law professor at Emory University. The Center for the Study of Law and Religion focuses on the relationship law has with religion and religion has with law and all of its complexities and nuances. How this impacts on Torah or Jewish law um, is of course a very important question and it's a topic that I think about all the time. The academic study of Torah and the classical yeshiva study of Torah is perhaps to some extent my own life story. I've taken no academic Jewish studies classes at all. I have a law degree. I studied at Yeshiva University for 14 wonderful years. And I've served as a way of blending the two of them myself, mostly in the view that both of these disciplines, the academic study of Judaism, the academic study of Torah, and the Yeshiva study of Torah, serve as a search for truth. Multiple paths to the top of the mountain, the top of the mountain is the same place, and there's sometimes more than one path to that top. Technology has changed this in many very significant ways. We are living in an astonishing era where every library contains hundreds of books. I sit in my office every day with an online library of tens of thousands of books. I have a larger library in my office at Emory than the Krakow Jewish community of 700,000 had in their central library in the year 1850. Technology has changed the study of rabbinics by giving everybody access to an enormous library. But there's something else running here as well. Technology has given everybody access to every Jewish scholar alive instantaneously. It's communication which previously took months and was slow and the world changed before you got an answer is now instantaneous. The question of what happens when you bring Torah into academia and the other way around, of course, is a very important one. And it's worth understanding that when two competing truths collide, you develop a dialectic tension. Two truths interact with each other and if they're both really true, 
each one walks away modifying its own understanding of truth a little bit in light of the truth that it's just encountered. Truths don't collide, they meld. And that interaction is absolutely fascinating. It's worth participating in the melding of truth day in and day out. Shavuot, Shavuos, is Zman Matan Torasenu. It's the time when the Torah was given. And the tradition is not that we view Torah as a historical fact that we look backwards to. Torah here means the fact that this is a life that we live, not only yesterday and not only today, but tomorrow. And the simple fact is, is that Torah brings a central message to the world of constant morality. Many things change, technology changes, status changes, the reality changes, but the basic principles upon which Torah were designed to function are a truth never ending. And to the extent that you want to analyze contemporary Torah in a very grand message, it's even as the outcomes change, the rules remain the same. And the constant rules that remain the same allow Judaism to present itself as a touchstone of morality in the basic modern world that we live in. That's our message, and that's a very important message in this ever-changing world. Have a wonderful holiday. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Mayanot Women's Program in Jerusalem. My name is Mayor Levinger. I'm the director of the program over here. I would like to show you around a bit how the women sit over here and learn Torah. This same exact Torah that was given to us 3,000 years ago at Mount Sinai. Nowadays, here in Jerusalem, women from all over the world come to spend time and learn Torah in its authentic manner, in the most genuine way possible. All the women over here are aged 20 to 29, either in middle of college or after college, or some of them already have jobs, and they basically decide to take off a chunk of time, maybe six months, three months, or a year, where they basically want to come and learn something not outside of them, learning something about themselves, learning about something about their relationship with their true self, which is their connection to God. And there's no better place to do that in Jerusalem, where everything about God and Judaism is so obvious and apparent. Okay. My Not Women's program was started actually by popular demand of women all over the world that have academic background. And they felt nowadays, when we have women that are doctors, or lawyers, professionals, business ladies, and so on and so forth, there's no reason why when it comes to secular studies, the knowledge and the depth and the, the width, the, the breadth and the width of, the, of their knowledge in secular studies should be so much greater than their connection and knowledge when it comes to Judaism. And that demand actually brought about the creation of our program where women have the ability to come and get their knowledge of God and Judaism and tradition and, our, and the knowledge of our country and our people exactly to that same level of breadth and, and depth as their secular studies. Over here we believe very, very strongly that Torah is not something outside of you imposed on you. It's rather something within you. It's your true inner self. And that's why we put a very strong emphasis over here not only in telling you what the book says, but rather teaching you the skills that you should have the ability to pick up that book and see for yourself what the book is saying. As a part of the learning, the skill style, we actually learn over here like the ancient way. We call it yeshiva style learning. Yeshiva style learning is called chavruta style. In Judaism, it's about taking the text and trying to work out, trying to understand what is the inner depth of what is the text really trying to tell me. And in order to do that, you do it with a partner that makes sure that you're not buttering up anything, you're not overlooking anything, you're really trying to get into the very depth, or as they say in Yiddish, to the kishkes of a thing. Just like a body has a body and a soul, the same the Torah and our relationship with our Creator has a body and a soul. Like for example, the very idea that we're now coming to Shavuos. And a lot of people see it, okay, it's the day that we got the Book of Laws. 
I usually ask my, question, my, my students, would you really be interested in getting a book that tells you so many commandments of how to do so many things? I don't know. Maybe some of you love being told what to do. I personally, I don't like that. But what does Chassidus teach us? Chassidus teaches us that we have 630 mitzvot. The word mitzvah, the simple meaning is commandment, but the deeper meaning of mitzvah is tzavta, togetherness. It's 613 tips on how we could develop our relationship with our Creator. That's why Shavuot, the holiday that is coming up now, it's called in Chassidut the day of the marriage. It's the day that, that God is basically sharing with us His most inner secrets, and everything about him. That's also the reason why Jews all over the world are going to stay awake the whole night before. According to the Zohar, that's the night that we prepared the 24 adornments of the bride. So throughout the whole night, we try to catch up on a lot of Torah learning. We try to know as much as possible about God in order that we should be able in the morning to receive the Torah by the Torah reading on Shavuot. Hi, my name is Yehuda Dukes, and I run an organization called JNet, the Jewish Learning Network. The idea behind JNet is that there's lots of people who are looking to study a little more uh, and don't have the time to make it out to a class. What we do is we set people up to study on the phone for half an hour a week. And this, uh, th this form of learning makes it a lot easier for them because sometimes you, know, you really don't have that kind of time in your schedule. Here, you have someone on the phone who is gonna call you at the time which works is most convenient for you. One of the, uh, the, the ways of study, which was, you know, the, the has been the primary form of study for, for, for many generations of the Torah, has been studying one-on-one -on -one in what's called a chavrusa setting. Um, a chavrusa is basically two people getting together and studying a text one-on-one -on -one. Um, and uh, JNet really is the next generation of chavrusa study where you're not limited to have, having to be um, you know sitting together with your study partner but you can be in two opposite sides of the globe uh, you know getting together with a, a webcam or even just on the phone and studying Torah in that same way that people have been studying Torah for many generations. Uh, we've set up over, uh, well over 2,000 uh, matches and um, we currently have over 500 people studying weekly which comes out to over 27,000 sessions a year. My name is Robert Antevel, we're file. I'm from Sarasota, Florida and I've been studying with JNet um, about four and a half, almost five years. I wanted to learn more about who I was. I wanted to learn more about Judaism and who I was and, and more about my people. I called JNet and then I started studying and um, it's been varied. It's been everything from the Parsha of the week to um, we studied Haggadah. I had some questions about morning blessings and so just recently with my study partner, we, uh, we went over all the morning blessings and how they were derived and, and what they mean. And, but when you've allocated time on JNet, this is your learning time. It's five o'clock on Mondays, the phone rings, it's my study partner, and we hit the books and we start learning right away. Try it for a month. Um, I would say that um, take advantage of the technology. We've been trying to learn this document that we call the Torah for 5,000 years. And this is just another way for us to, to uh, gain insight. Every single person has their own unique and special connection to the Torah that Hashem gave them on Shavuot. And so I want to encourage you to explore that connection. Try to find the way that you connect to the Torah and increase in your Torah learning in some way. Ronnie Schwartz, uh, CTO of RustyBurke.com. do websites, uh, mostly web development, and we do iPhone development. We started doing sitter development for iPhone. That was our first app. We just wanted to build a sitter for iPhone. Um, and after that, we started branching off our business into mobile development. 
uh, mostly an iPhone at first, but now we're into Android and also uh, a little bit of BlackBerry development. So one of our goals uh, of developing Jewish software for iPhone was to specifically to enable um, Jewish people around the world to access um, the text that they needed to pray with or study Torah with uh, or anything like that in very convenient fashion. The rules haven't changed, the text haven't changed. We tried to incorporate where technology improves uh, daily you know, Jewish life, we'll try to um, take advantage of that. So one example is inside of our Sitter app we have a tefillin mirror. Uh, the tefillin, which is uh, the straps you wear every day, you would have to position them uh, on top of your head in certain fashion. So we provide a you know a camera that helps you use it as a mirror. To, let's say our one of our newer apps, which is Tikkun, which is um, a uh, a uh, like a bar mitzvah tool for uh, people studying their bar mitzvah or for professional Torah readers, uh, people who lean from the Torah. Uh, one of our most popular holiday apps is the Megillus Esther app, which um, pretty much has the story of Esther in there. You give it a shake and it gives you a random grogger noise or whatever noise you want. Um, it's really fun to play with and we just expanded that to the iPad this year. So traditionally Jews have to, pr have to pray towards uh, Jerusalem and uh, in order for that, you know, for people to figure that out, the direction, we have a compass that automatically knows where Yerushalayim is and will orient you towards that direction. So that's another, you know, convenience kind of, uh, you know, feature that we have. Kosher app is a great app for finding kosher food all around the world. Uh, to give you an example, I was in Giant Stadium at an event and I opened up the kosher app and it told me to go which section to get the kosher hot dogs and it brought me right there. Certain aspects of, of technology would never be able to replace the old uh, traditions of Judaism. And some of those are, you know, like you still have to read out of a Torah. Not that you can't bring your iPad to to the shul and pray, you know, and use that. With Shavuos on coming, you know, uh, the celebration of the Torah, there's more chance than ever to uh, better yourself as a Jew. There's apps to check uh, candle lighting times. There's apps to learn Torah, to recite Tehillim. Uh, do all these things. You, it's a good opportunity to use them, use the accessibility of all this technology and, and better yourself as a Jew.